How's it going guys? I gotta apologize for the delay in content. I was moving and it ended up taking about six weeks total. I just now got my internet set up. I do have about four or five videos coming this month, including today's video, the most important one that you've all been waiting on is the U-Box install video. So I'm gonna go over that. I'm gonna go over exactly how I did it. And basically I've been testing this scooter now about three months, I think, and it's performed flawlessly. Haven't had a single issue with the drivetrain, with the controller, with overheating, none of that. But now I think I can officially say the U-Box is Scooter Gang approved and you guys should definitely look into it. We're gonna start out on the handlebars of this scooter. This is a twist throttle that's available from Spintend and it's decent, but Spintend actually just released a brand new spinny throttle that looks like about like the Ryan Curve throttle or the boosted board throttle, similar to those where it's a wheel and you scroll. That's already on the way to me. It'll be here in probably the next week or two. So I'm gonna have a second video more about throttles specifically. I did buy these two other throttles from Alibaba just to test them out. But honestly, they're not gonna be close to the quality of the spinny plus the customizability of the spinny because the wheel goes forward to accelerate and backward to brake. And so that'll give you a way to use regenerative braking very easily with the U-Box. If you wanna install one of these, that's okay too. Save a little bit of money. It'll work fine. Like I said, I've been using a very similar one to these for the last three months and it works great when you do your programming in the vesk tool app it will map the throttle voltage and what that means is it will measure the voltage from the top to the bottom when you're when you're at full and as you're using the throttle for a bit it'll record what's what's happening and then optimize your throttle to your controller so that's what smooths out the throttle so there's no dead zone and it's like very smooth action so it's not actually the throttle itself that really matters it's really about the the programming afterwards that can make these throttles really smooth and that's that's what you're going for with the u-box is smooth power and it comes from having a throttle that is programmable through the u-box if you do want to install one of these like i did obviously for the last three months it comes with five wires now let's move back to the cockpit as you can see, this is a very bare bones build and that's because I think simple is the best, at least for me and for my applications. I wanted to use this for commuting. I just wanted to go and stop. That's it and be reliable. And so it has the throttle, it has a voltmeter that's attached to the throttle and then it has the brakes. That's literally it on this handlebar. It's very minimalistic and I think it makes it very simple and easy to build your own if you do this. And then as you wanna add more features, you can add say turn signals, add a horn, add lights, add whatever you want. But this is sort of the step one of the U-Box is to just install it and get the drivetrain running. So that's what we're gonna go over today first. And that's really all I've had running for the last three months because that's all you really need. And I, like I said, the, the more complicated you make these, it's just the more things that there are to break down the line that you're gonna end up fixing. So for me personally, I just like it simple. And so with this guy, we made it real simple. All right, so I'm gonna take the deck off for the first time in a couple months. I'm gonna show you guys also how I did the waterproofing on this deck lid. Shout out to Pirate, his YouTube channel. He does a lot of these similar videos. If you wanna see another pro doing this, same exact sort of installs on very similar scooters, then go check out Pirate, his channel is awesome. We got all the screws off. Open her up. Now let's move you a little closer. Now I'm gonna uninstall and remove the battery just to make it easier for you to see everything. But your battery is gonna be plugged in. Mine has an XT60 coming directly from the battery. So I use this adapter here to get the XT90 on the other end because otherwise you have to solder on an XT90. So this just for me is less work. Obviously it's more expensive, but I wanted to show this option for you guys that want to avoid as much soldering as possible because for a few bucks, you can get this right here, which will allow you to plug an XT60 into an XT90. This is our power. So our battery also is connected to the charging ports. You can use this as all stock if you want. I just ended up adding some extra wire to give these some more length, but you shouldn't have to change this if you don't want to. Now you can see there's a bit of a wire mess going on here, but honestly, all scooters have a lot of wires. And that's something that moving forward is probably only gonna get worse. As more and more components get added, there's gonna be even more wires. So that's something you're just gonna have to learn to look at your scooter, 
from the components and see how they're wired together if you're going to be modding scooters and stuff because there's not a lot of like books out there about this yet but you can obviously learn it just by looking at it if you if you want to the basics of this build my build have three components the u-box this fan and this which is called the adc controller it interface with your throttle up top and it converts a 5 volt to a 3.3 volt. It's very hard for me to explain. I'm gonna link all of these parts for you to look at and Spintend actually gives a lot of information about these on their website if you really want to know. But essentially you need this to connect the throttle to the U-Box. So in order to get this, first you need to give this power. And our main power source is gonna be down here. This is what I used. It's the middle plug on the right side, this one, and it says 12 volt ground fan minus. So what I have hooked up to that is a couple wires. I have both my fan and my ADC adapter wired together and then into that outlet. And what that does is it powers both my fan and my ADC adapter. From there, you mainly need to connect your throttle to your ADC adapter. Your throttle is over here. And what you do is you unscrew these little screws, strip the end of the wire and slide it in and screw it down. And then that's how you connect everything. All your components can go on here that you end up with. But for now, like I said, for the simplicity of things, we just have our throttle hooked up. Three wires. This is the same three wires we were talking about earlier on the throttle. And I could clean this up a little bit right now and I think I'm going to just because these are hanging out a little bit and I don't want them to ever cross, right? That could create a major issue. This is a good reason that I'm going back over this, honestly, is to clean up any problems that I had before. I do, I know I have like a spare wire hanging off down here. So I'm gonna take care of some things while I'm in here just to get this perfect. But that's one thing to look out for is when you're putting these in, don't leave the wire so long like this. That was a mistake on my part. I'm gonna take this little mini screwdriver and you're gonna always need one of these. This is the most useful tool because you can cut the wire and you can strip the wire. That's what you need more than anything to build this, this mod. I'm gonna unscrew these one at a time, fix them one at a time to make sure that you don't put anything back wrong. But see what I mean? If you have this too, too long, that's a rookie mistake. I'm gonna cut this outside of the box. So no wire falls in the box. Cut it about that length right there. About half of what it was. Back in the same spot. Screwdriver. Now you can see that's how it should look where the wire casing goes all the way to the edge, not like these two. So I'm gonna fix these quick. Probably skip this part of the video. And the red one. Double check they're tight before we move on. Perfect. So that's the first three wires of the throttle right here. What about the other two, you ask? Well, they come down here to the ground, battery, and ignite. The yellow one I have hooked up to the battery plus, and the blue one I have hooked up to the ignite. And what these do is go up to your voltmeter and give the battery voltage to your voltmeter, these two wires while the other three from the throttle control the throttle itself. So the throttle is very simple. There's really only two connections, two, your ADC adapter, and two, this port right here to get your battery voltage. So there, we have our throttle that's hooked up. Another thing I ended up doing was adding headlights. And I also added an LED light inside of here so that my box glows at night. And how did I do that? Well, on this portion of the ADC adapter. Here's the ground and here's the positive. Your lights will come with two wires. You're gonna hook all of the positive or red wires to this spot and all of the negative or black wires to this spot. And that's the 12 volt socket and the ground socket on the top of the ADC adapter. Now, 
Another thing to note when you're looking at this ADC adapter are these little knobs right here. When I first fired my scooter up, it was going really slow and that's because these are physical speed limiters. So I opened them up all the way to 100% and then the scooter acted like normal. But if they're if they're low or set that low by default, then you're probably going to want to turn them up. As of right now, I do not have e-brakes hooked up on this. Now I do have this hooked up but it does not go anywhere yet. Now your ADC adapter is fully hooked up for our purpose of a simple drivetrain scooter that goes fast. For the U-Box itself, a couple small things to connect. One of these wires will come with it, UART seven cable wire, and you're gonna plug it in both sides to here and to here. This is the main, this one is the secondary, but we don't need that. That would be if you're going four wheel drive and have two of these hooked up, but this, We'll control both of our motors. The only remaining thing to hook up is this. And what are these you ask? These are the phase wires. So each of your motor is gonna have one of these coming off with three wires and you're gonna hook them up to the existing wires that plug into the top of the ESC. These are four millimeter bullet connectors. If your scooter comes with something other than this, let me try and show you. Mine came with four millimeter bullet connectors. So if you have a Yumi Y10 at least, this model, then you will likely not have to do any extra soldering. And you can just, you can just directly plug this in. And that's worked perfectly fine for me. Everything's stock as far as the wiring. This is where things get a little tricky because under normal load and nothing extreme, I believe everything will hold up fine. But I do want to caution you guys against turning the U-Box up super high power and turning the regen braking up all the way and turning the top speed way up and going for, for high speed runs for long distances because that's gonna get to the point where your motor wires are gonna get hot. Not just your controller, normally your controller and your battery will get warm after a long time. But if you push the limits, you're gonna end up with phase wires melting because these are stock. If you really need to push the limits, you're gonna have to upgrade all this wiring all of the, the battery wiring, the probably the BMS, and all of these phase wires, because these are small. These are maybe 16 gauge wire, I can't tell. But they need more wire if you're gonna be pushing the scooter super hard. But I'm not in that case, use case, because I'm more built this for commuting. So I built this to run about 30 miles an hour. I'm happy with it at that speed. It gets up to it in like three seconds. So I can be any car. That's what I wanted, was something that could commute legally because our speed limit's about 25 miles per hour. So if I keep it around that, then there shouldn't be any issues. Just fast enough to keep up with traffic. That's the main goal with this scooter for me, not to be passing people on the highway. And I think a lot of people sort of have that idea in their head that they could buy a controller like this and then all of a sudden have a crazy fast scooter. But it's more about making your ride more efficient. You're gonna use the same amount of power, same amount of everything, right? So you're gonna get about the same range, but you're gonna get up to 30 miles an hour really, really fast. That's the main difference here between a stock Yumi and one that you would upgrade like this. So if that's something you want, this is hopefully a video that's helping you out to see that this is pretty simple to install, right? Because I don't want anybody to think that this is rocket science or magic because really, when you break it down, we just went through all the wires and it's not that much work, really. Not that much. Even if you did have to solder different things on, you're talking about maybe 15 wires total, you hook it up and then you're running. One more thing, I was gonna tell you guys how to get the perfect seal. When I close this back up, I'm probably going to peel this off, start with another layer of this sort of uh, clear silicone sealant. And all you do is put it all the way around the edge in a nice bead and then you let it dry overnight right and it will create this bead right there that then when you attach the deck it will smash it down and create this gasket sort of thing around the whole edge and so thank you to pirate again that's your technique and i love it i think it works the best get some of this it'll help you it doesn't really matter the brand i don't think just clear silicone sealant will work obviously you're going to want to do the same around here with black sealant both there and all on the inside here to create a spot that no water can enter. And then the same in the back right here, black sealant around the, with the wires 
the clear sealant on the top to form a gasket. Once you get it all hooked up, you kick it on, the fan will kick on. Now obviously this is still a prototype, work in progress. I am interested to hear any people's thoughts on the airflow and how we could possibly get fresh air into the box without allowing water in. I know that's a tough ask because why would you have a sealed deck, do all this sealing, just put a hole in it for some air? But if you guys are going to be pushing the upper limits, maybe you have a 72 volt scooter and you're doing this, it's going to get hot. And so this is something you're going to have to think about down the road is how are we going to mitigate the heat with better airflow or even some kind of liquid cooling in the future, obviously. That's going to be a while, but I think that's where we're headed. Now, I did build this deck right here. I'll link the material. It's on Amazon. It's very easy to trace your own deck and build one. I really did this just to be able to see what was going on to make sure nothing happened while I was riding. Nothing shifted, nothing unplugged or whatever. And everything's looking normal. I don't think you have to do this. To me, it was worth it just to watch. If you guys found this video useful, or maybe inspiring something that you might wanna do, be sure to subscribe. I'm gonna have another video soon with the Vest Tool programming. Obviously, that is the final step after you hook this up. Then you have to program it in order to get it to run properly with your motors and your throttle. It's not hard. And I'll have that up probably in the next couple weeks. And for all those new people out there, I am going to be posting reviews on the Evercross, GoTrax, and the second Evercross, a new Max. That's right, new has released a Max model with big range, big battery that should compete with all of these. So it's an interesting month for entry-level scooters. I'm excited to see how the entry-level scooters pan out. Right now, I like all of them. But this Yumi is now my pride and joy. I love riding this thing. It is an absolute beast. It is definitely faster than the VSET 11 Plus stock. So there's one more thing you should know about and that is the fuses. I don't actually have a fuse in my scooter right now because I believe the BMS is adequate at shutting itself off. And if something happens, I'm gonna be careful plugging it back in and resetting it. But a lot of you may like to have a fuse. And so this is a fuse that I bought and wired up. Basically you can put an XT90 on both sides and plug it in between the battery and the controller. This is a 50 amp fuse which is the max that you should be drawing from most batteries anyways. What this does is just redundancy. It gives you an extra layer of protection that you wouldn't otherwise have. I may end up putting it back in, but to me, the fuse is not necessary completely. If you're gonna be running super, super high amps, just realize it's hard to get fuses like this that are, that are in the right range. If you can see, it says max 32 volt fuse so when you do 32 volt times 50 obviously we're running more watts than this is rated for is it safe probably could it melt maybe it may end up like another issue i had with the zero 10x right now where the fuses are melted and i'm still dealing with fixing it so for me personally i'm just not going to use this right now if i hear about problems i will let you know but as of right now, I'm going fuseless. Now there's two techniques that I want to show you. The first is how to use these connectors. Start by stripping the end of your wire and twist. Now there's probably a better tool for this, but just using the end of my wire strippers, I could bend the tongs up. And that creates a little channel that you can put your wire in and then you crimp it down. And what this does is creates a little wire connector on the end. You then take that little wire connector and put it into the white plastic UART connector. The metal piece has a little hook on it. And so you slide the hook facing up and that will catch on the inside of the connector and not allow the wire to come back out. I like to smash it down a little just to make sure it's secure. The second technique, you're going to need to know how to solder, specifically soldering two or three wires together. First, strip both wires, twist them up. You're going to crisscross and intertwine them by twisting them. You're going to heat it up with your soldering iron just till the wires get warm. Get a very small coating of flux on the end of your solder and simply add the solder to the wire. It should fill out the wire very easily. Then take your shrink wrap 
and put it over the soldered connection. Carefully melt the shrink wrap with either a lighter or a heat gun. And that's how you can solder two of these smaller wires together very easily.